Stakeholders have converged on Lagos to chart the path for an effective implementation of the National Action Plan for Business and Human Rights at this year's Roundtable. Correspondent Justin Akadonye reports that the Roundtable reckons with the UN Global Combat mission of driving companies to align strategies and operations with the 10 universal principles anchored on human rights, labor, environment and anti-corruption. His report. People have different the United Nations Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights gives a framework on how governments and businesses are to protect and respect human rights, including what mechanisms are to be put in place to reduce, mitigate and redress business-related violations. There is no gain saying that businesses have a role in protecting human rights because they deal with assets that belong to communities and as such stakeholders have gathered in this hall for the 2023 edition of the National Business and Human Rights Roundtable. Healthy, that's mental. Right. Organized by the United Nations Global Compact Network, Nigeria and Global Right, the National Business and Human Rights Roundtable brings together corporations, government agencies and civil society organizations to support the business and human rights agenda. The organizers believe that this year's roundtable will facilitate an understanding and effective implementation of the nation's recently approved action plan. Throughout the next two days, we have the opportunity to engage in very meaningful discussions, share best practices, and explore innovative approaches to implement the National Action Plan on Business and Human Rights in Nigeria. The call to action we extend to each stakeholder present today is an invitation to weave human rights principles in, into the very fabric of business operations. Um, it's this, almost the same set of objectives to enable government to create, support government to create that enabling government uh, environment that will help businesses to thrive and then support the welfare of the citizens, to enable businesses transact their businesses and make profits, and, that's what, and in the same vein, respect the rights of the citizens. Now we have the National National Plan, so the question is what next? And that is why this event uh, this year is very, very strategic and very critical to say, can we have a conversation? Can we have a dialogue? How do we give effect to the National Action Plan? And so it doesn't end up as one of those documents that are just in the shelf, but to make it a life document, a workable document. The National Action Plan provides clear benchmarks for measuring progress and achievement in the implementation process by allocating roles and responsibilities for each stakeholder group. However, casualization of employment, environmental hazards are some challenges the Action Plan seeks to solve. In respect of these hazards and workplace safety, how can periodic monitoring of operations be done to ensure compliance with standards? I have a lot of hope, but I think the fact that there's a plan does not automatically translate to the idea that there will be some changes in the way businesses respond to human rights issues. I believe one of the key incentives is competitive advantage, where competitive advantage is placed up as a result of compliance or increased uptake of human rights imperatives, you are going to see much more businesses play in that particular space. The roundtable features discussions on rethinking human rights across supply chains, access to remedy vis-a-vis -vis opportunities for redress in the National Action Plan, as well as stakeholders' role towards achieving effective implementation. Justin Akadoni, Plus TV News, Lagos. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.